This week on ICN, the stories you should have heard but didn't. The global warming debate turned upside down. The 2009 Continental Congress concludes with putting government officials on notice. China's one-child policy and your freedom. Those stories and more next on Informed Citizen News. Hello and welcome to ICN, Informed Citizen News, December 6, 2009. We launched ICN about one year ago on November 23, 2008. This broadcast signifies our 51st weekly report over the last 12 months. When we posted our first broadcast, we had no idea whether anyone would actually watch. We haven't gone viral, but our first viewers were loyal and helped spread the word, and we thank you for that. We have an aggressive vision for ICN. Cover the critical news each week in 10 minutes or less so that overworked, busy Americans can have a place to get informed. Our goals for 2010 are, with your help, to continue to grow viewers each week, launch a website to reduce our dependence on YouTube, and provide additional content. We'll also provide supplemental special reports that go deeper into important subject areas. This show will be our last broadcast for 2009, so we can use the next month to get ready for 2010. This will also be a time for you to share your suggestions on how ICN can be more effective in reaching more Americans. An informed America is a free and prosperous America. Again, thank you for your continuing support. Now we'll get to this week's news. Last week, we reported on the 2009 Continental Congress where elected state representatives met in Illinois to collectively discuss the perceived constitutional violations perpetrated by the federal government. During the 12-day gathering, all alleged constitutional violations were discussed and debated. The intent of the 2009 Continental Congress was to hear the different perspectives on those matters and then collectively decide on a course of action. At the conclusion of the meetings, the participants agreed to create Articles of Freedom the purpose of which is to put elected and appointed government officials on notice. The Articles of Freedom begins with the following proverbial shot across the bow. Let the facts reveal the federal government of the United States of America, which was instituted to protect the rights of individual citizens, instead threatens our life, liberty, and property through usurpations of the Constitution and emboldened by our lack of responsibility and due diligence in these matters, has exceeded its mandate and abandoned those founding principles which have made our nation exceptional. The Articles of Freedom go on to list current and ongoing constitutional violations. These violations will be communicated to elected and appointed government officials. This is one of the largest groups not affiliated with a political party to organize and submit grievances to the federal government. This was a first step, but follow-through will be critical, and we'll be watching. French brokerage firm Société de Générale put the fear of God in clients recently by predicting that developed economies and markets are going to collapse under a monster debt load, and that gold is going to soar to $6,000 an ounce. This was a worst case of three scenarios outlined in a report to clients. The basic premise was that the foundations of leading global economies are so weak that government must fuel them with debt, ultimately leading to a debt spiral that collapses global commerce under the weight of unsustainable interest payments. We have provided a link to several sources related to this report under more info in our video description section. In an article titled, War on Freedom Targets Yard Sales, Lemonade Stands, and Fuel Cells, Writer Lee Bellinger warns about the unintended consequences of a heavy-handed government. He claims that the rise of the black market, the free market, is one consequence of political rules and mandates which are largely responsible for crippling our economy. But instead of letting the markets work, politicians and bureaucrats are gearing up to meddle in unprecedented ways. He goes on to provide examples, such as a city council shutting down an eight-year-old's lemonade stand or an entrepreneur who spent two years in prison for not putting a federally mandated sticker on a UPS package. Mr. Bellinger concludes it's all leading toward what may best be described as fascism, as rapidly spreading bureaucratic parasites gain control over most of the private sector. 
Black's Law Dictionary defines conspiracy as the combination of two or more persons formed together to commit an unlawful or criminal act. On November 20th, the preeminent Climate Research Institute at the University of Anglia confirmed that a department server was hacked and internal documents and emails posted online by hackers were authentic. It has been claimed that the emails show that scientists manipulated data to bolster their argument that global warming is genuine and is being caused by human actions. Documents, letters, and emails that are the most damaging contain blunt information about the degree of manipulation of climate science and of the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change. Many supporters of man-made global warming brush aside the controversy as quotes being taken out of context. But these emails and letters contain such incriminating statements as We must get rid of the medieval warm period, an obvious effort to remove the historical record of naturally occurring warming periods. Another refers to a trick being employed to massage temperature statistics to hide the decline. Phil Jones, director of the program, wrote in 1999, I've just completed Mike's nature trick of adding in the real temperatures to each series of the last 20 years to hide the decline. Dr. Jones, under pressure, resigned this past week. Another email refers to making statistics clearly phrased and widely understandable, while specifically referring to people as the ignorant masses. It is hard to believe that the documents and emails coming out of the University of Anglia is an isolated incident. These documents go back years to the 1990s and involve numerous staff members. Global warming is becoming a source of power. It is an industry, and as such, it drives politics, laws, money, and influence. The debate will continue, as it should. But this should be a lesson to those who want to manipulate. Our next story is about personal freedom and sovereignty. Do men, women, and children exist to serve the state? or does the state exist to serve the people? The extreme of state ownership of people manifests itself in China's one-child policy. On the surface, having a law that requires one child per family in a country with a billion people may sound reasonable to some. Law by definition requires enforcement, and that's when it gets ugly. In China, each family is required to obtain a birth permit before the mother can become legally pregnant. Mandatory contraception exorbitant fines for non-compliance, physical beatings of relatives, and often forced sterilization and abortion are part of the responsibilities of the population and family planning offices in China. Forced abortions for mothers nine months into pregnancy are not uncommon. Perfectly healthy mother and child, one sentenced to death, while the other emotionally scarred for life. Another consequence to the policy is the selective pregnancies and preference for male children that results in skewing the population. China will soon see a time when there will be 30% more males than females, sentencing tens of millions of men to life without a female. Before you think that this can never happen in a free America, let's look at how the government controls Americans' lives now. At the present time, you need permission from the government to work, drive a car, marry, start a family business, to either home educate your children or send them to public school, or even open a bank account. The government lays first claim to your labor, your property, and your estate. Imagine explaining how we now live to the likes of John Adams or Thomas Jefferson. Or even dare to speak of such slavishness to Patrick Henry, who said, Is life so dear or peace so sweet as to be purchased at the price of chains and slavery? Forbid it, almighty God! I know not what course others may take, but as for me, give me liberty or give me death. The key is to avoid getting to the point where you have to contemplate liberty or death. The state exists to protect our unalienable rights and freedoms. It is up to each of us to make sure they do this job. Thanks for joining us this week. Remember, this is our last show for 2009. Send us suggestions for 2010 and we'll see you in January. Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays, and a very Happy New Year. From all of us at Informed Citizen News, see you next time.